Did you know that bison make great groomsmen at weddings? No? How about a hippopotamus you can picnic with? Sounds amazing, right? Or maybe not such a good idea. Well, in this video, I'll tell you about 10 of the most dangerous wild animals that humans have managed to tame. And at the end of the video, you'll find out why you should never mess with camels. Enjoy watching. I'll start with the remarkable story of the Bridges family and their equally remarkable bison named Wild. Ronnie and Sharon, a couple from America, owned an entire herd of more than 50 bison. Over time, they could no longer care for all the animals, so they had to sell them all, except one. The Bridges kept a small calf and named him Wild. Wild behaved like a good dog. The little one roamed freely around the house, watched his favorite movies on TV, joined family picnics, and even had breakfast at the table with everyone. He even served as a groomsman at the couple's wedding once. It's amazing how such a giant with a wild nature became a gentle and friendly pet. The Bridges claim that the love and care they gave Wild made him so obedient and peaceful. This story became very popular, but I had never heard of it before. Had you? If humans can tame a bison, surely they can handle a monkey. Or can they? Let's find out. Meet Damien Aspinall, the owner of a zoo who once received a baby gorilla named Queeby. Her parents were killed by poachers, leaving her all alone, so Damien couldn't refuse to take her in. He grew very attached to his new pet, constantly playing with her, raising her, and caring for her. When Queeby grew up, she was released into the wild. The separation was very difficult. Five years later, Aspinall decided to travel to Gabon to find his old friend and see how she had adapted to life in the wild. This moment was captured on video and became widely known due to the emotional reunion between the man and the gorilla, who recognized her caretaker after years of separation. Unfortunately, not all primates are friendly creatures. In 2009, a chimpanzee named Travis escaped from his home. Sandra Harold, unaware of the danger, asked her friend to come over and help return him to his cage. They had done this many times before without any issues. But suddenly, Travis, who had lived with Harold for many years, became aggressive and attacked Nash. The attack was so brutal that Nash lost most of her face and hands. Sandra Harold tried to stop the chimpanzee but failed. She had to call the police, who euthanized Travis to stop the attack. Nash suffered severe physical and emotional trauma. She lost her vision and underwent numerous surgeries, including one of the most complex face transplant operations in medical history. She became the first person in the world to receive a double hand and face transplant. Although she was awarded $4 million in compensation, she didn't stop there. Nash continues to advocate for stricter laws regarding the keeping of exotic animals. What do you think about this? Another unusual example of a human-animal bond is the story of Irwan and his crocodile, Kojak. It all began in the late 90s, when Irwan bought a small crocodile from local boys for one and a half dollars. Irwan cared for him with great attention, and over time, they developed a strong bond. They played together, Irwan brushed him, and fed him fresh fish several times a day. Sometimes, of course, Kojak didn't get enough food, and the occasional stray cat that wandered into the yard would mysteriously disappear. Despite this, Kojak lived with Irwan's family, essentially becoming their pet. Thanks to the love and care of the brave man, Kojak grew from a four-inch baby into a three-meter-long creature weighing over 400 pounds. Their life together ended when the local authorities found out about the unusual pet living with the family. According to Indonesian law, crocodiles are protected and prohibited from being kept as pets. Kojak was taken from the family and sent to a safari park in Bogor. Irwan's family couldn't hold back their tears as they said goodbye to Kojak, having grown very attached to their pet over 20 years. Do you think the authorities did the right thing? Maybe the crocodile had a better life with the family. Many of you might have heard the stereotype that Rue, Sian's love vodka, bears, and playing the balalaika. Most of these stereotypes aren't true. But what if I told you that, almost 30 years ago, Svetlana and Yuri Pantelenko took a three-month-old bear cub into their home. They named him Stepan. The Pantelenkos cared for Stepan with great love. They fed their adoptive son well, live fish, vegetables, eggs, and his favorite treat, boiled condensed milk. So it's no surprise that this fierce predator soon became a full-fledged family member, living right in their house. In addition to living a carefree life with his Russian family, Stepan is also developing his career. The bear has already appeared in films such as Yolki, Tsar, and The Edge, which are quite popular movies. You might think Stepan is a unique case, and indeed such bears are not found in the wild. He is intelligent, kind, and possesses fairy tale beauty. You can not only approach and pet Stepan, but also sit on his massive back, 
Where else can you find something like this? You'll be surprised. But in 2002, the unimaginable happened. American Casey Anderson got hold of secret Russian books on taming bears. He took Brutus under his wing when the bear was just a cub. The reserve where Brutus was born was already overcrowded. He was slated to go to a zoo, but Casey didn't let that happen. It's amazing how affectionate and gentle such a dangerous predator, weighing almost 880 pounds and standing over six feet tall, can be. Brutus also isn't shy around cameras. This pair became famous thanks to their own TV show, supported by National Geographic. In his program, Casey aims to change the stereotypes about grizzlies, showing that bears are not always killers and bloodthirsty predators. Unfortunately, not all stories have happy endings. Cheyenne Hare lived with her mother, Jessica Hare, and her boyfriend, Charles Darnell. They also had a large Burmese python named Gypsy, which belonged to Charles. One tragic night, the python, kept in an aquarium, escaped from its enclosure. It slithered into Cheyenne's bedroom and attacked her. In the morning, Jessica Hare found her daughter lifeless, entwined by the python. She tried to save Cheyenne, but it was already too late. The parents were criminally charged. Although they claimed the snake had been harmless for the five years it lived with them, the fact that the python's enclosure had no secure lid and was covered only with a blanket was crucial evidence against the couple. Despite the girl's death being ruled an accident, they were charged with gross negligence regarding both the child's safety and the python's care. Imagine. Gypsy was severely underweight, weighing 100 pounds less than she should have. Monstrous negligence. In the end, Charles and Jessica were convicted of involuntary manslaughter and child abuse and were sentenced to prison. That's all quite interesting, but what about truly large animals? Can a person live with an elephant or, for instance, a hippopotamus? Of course they can. In 2000, during a flood in Limpopo, a young hippo was washed ashore near the home of the Joubert's. The baby was only about five hours old and would not have survived without help. So, Ranger Tony Joubert and his wife Shirley, who had no children of their own, took the hippo into their home and started caring for her, feeding and looking after her. Over time, Jessica became a full-fledged family member. She is now 24 years old and weighs about one and a half tons. You might think there's nothing surprising about this since hippos are herbivores and generally harmless. But that's not true, they can kill a person. However, in all these years, Jessica has never shown aggression. She even protects her saviors from crocodiles when the Joubert's enter the water. Jessica also loves South African rooibos tea and surely brews 75 gallons of it for her every day. She also enjoys sweet potatoes and likes to socialize and watch TV. Quite unusual hobbies for a wild animal, right? Jessica is the most famous hippo in the world. Over 105 documentaries have been made about her, and she remains one of South Africa's top tourist attractions, beloved by visitors. If humans can manage with a hippo, then surely they can handle little fluff balls. Let me tell you about it. Two cheetah cubs unexpectedly joined the family of Kim and Hein Shoman from South Africa. What does unexpectedly mean? It's simple. A cheetah mother gave birth to four cubs in the reserve, but since cheetahs can typically ensure the survival of only half their litter, the showmans decided to take two cubs into their home. Initially, the family tried to keep the cheetahs separate from their children, but life had other plans. Kim had to feed the cheetahs, Vaku and Skyla, every two hours, day and night, simultaneously with her own children. As a result, everything mixed together. Kim warmed milk for both Kayla and the cubs, putting them all to bed together, as the cheetahs also needed warmth and care. Thus, the dangerous cats became full-fledged family members and grew very close to the showman children. When the cheetahs turned one year old, they were moved to an enclosure in the backyard, but the children continued to visit regularly to play with them. The parents taught the children how to interact safely with the predators and explained that soon Vaku and Skyla would be sent to the reserve where they would be better off. Very touching, isn't it? Unfortunately, not all furry friends are so friendly. In 2005, Amber Michelle invited her nephew Couch over and decided to show him her pet cougar. Unexpectedly, the cougar managed to squeeze through the bars of its cage and attacked the boy. When the cougar attacked Couch, Amber Michelle rushed to help. She bravely tried to fend off the animal using anything she could find. As a result, the boy survived the attack, although he did suffer serious injuries. The animal control department had already fined Amber Michelle Couch because her 150-pound cougar did not have up-to-date vaccinations and pointed out that the cage the wild cat lived in was too small and the gaps between the bars were too wide to be safe. But Amber didn't seem to care. Her negligence nearly resulted in her nephew's death. Therefore, it's important to remember 
that the domestication process for wild animals is not quick and is not suitable for all creatures on our planet. Let me tell you, for example, about pigs. They are descended from wild boars. Initially, people hunted them, but later decided to bring them home and start fattening them up. Fattened boars became less aggressive and shed their fur, since they were now always warm and safe. This is how the domestic mini pigs came to be. Similarly, cows and sheep were domesticated. All these creatures were once wild. The situation with cats is different. They weren't used for food, but for assistance. Wild Libyan cats, also known as North African wild cats, came closer to humans on their own after barns and granaries, which attracted mice, started appearing with the development of agriculture. Rodents caused significant damage to the farms, so people didn't chase the cats away, but instead tried to feed and befriend them. This is how the fluffy companions we all know appeared. Of course, this didn't happen overnight, but you get the idea. Sometimes, however, these beautiful creatures remember who they were thousands of years ago. For instance, during a conflict with her pet, a woman in Russia suffered a serious attack. The four-legged friend bit her shoulder, but the woman decided to go to the hospital only a week later. By then, she had developed a severe tissue infection, which could have been fatal, but fortunately she recovered. In another story, a cat bit its owner's vein. When the ambulance arrived, they couldn't understand where all the blood was coming from. Had someone attacked the woman with a knife in her own home? But no, it turned out the pet was the culprit. So be careful with these little predators. The next story is almost unbelievable. Honestly, I'm still shocked by what happened. Here it is. A 60-year-old Australian woman received a camel as a gift for her birthday. The camel was about 10 months old and already weighed approximately 330 pounds. Despite its age, the animal was quite large and strong. Although such a gift might seem strange, it didn't appear dangerous, especially since the woman had a large stock and sheep. Whether the camel was truly unusual or just didn't get along with the other animals on Pam Weaver's property remains unknown. However, the camel had repeatedly tried to kill the family goat. One evening, it even tried to mate with Weaver. When she tried to fight back, the camel knocked her down, step D on her head, and pressed down with its body, suffocating her. Hoof marks were found on Pam Weaver's face and hands. The woman's death caused a wide public outcry and drew attention to the dangers associated with keeping exotic and wild animals as pets. Therefore, it's important to always remember the potential risks and take precautions. By the way, leave a comment about that bear who ate 40 pounds of fish a day and didn't deny himself anything. And if you also want to live without any restrictions, I have something to offer you. We are looking for script writers, voice actors, editors, and creative producers for our videos. Interested? Then follow the link in the comments and submit your application. Thanks for watching.